video, I am super happy because the mud truck is finally ready for its test voyage and it's the one time where hopefully it's actually going to look shiny and nice and not brown. So I'm just going to give you a quick rundown into what went into the build, a few little basics for mud truck building as we know it here in the UK and compare these two essentially identical trucks and why one is crawler spec and what the differences now are to the mud truck. So both of these vehicles are based upon the same chassis. They are both the FTX Outback Fury, which in some countries is marketed as a RGT rock crawler. Um, this one we've owned since release of the model. We've done a lot of modifications to make it really crawling biased. It's an excellent, robust little rig. So we took what we've learned with this, with the strength and custom parts, transferred it over to the mud truck, as well as being able to share parts between the two. We knew the driveline could take, in this case, a lot of torque and very heavy wheels. So it makes sense that once you take the unsprung weight away, it can take the power of a 3S LiPo setup. So we get the crawler one out of the way and we'll explain what parts transfer directly to this and then what we do to just kick it up a notch into the league of mud trucking. I'll start in the least important place, but it's my current favorite, which is the actual looks of the rig. Now, since the start of development, you may have known this mud truck with this shell here. Some kind of Ford F-series thing. Now, this shell was too long. It came off, well, it's given to me with this model. I end up having to cut the arches, but it, it always sat, it had, its nose was too long. It looked like some stupid Pinocchio truck. So cool as that looks on the wall, it looks stupid on the shelf. You may then have seen it in its shakedown run, I'll put the link in the description, with the good old redneck limo shell. Now again, this is kind of cool, but it's really heavy and also, as cool as it looks, it's a little bit toy grade. So ideally, I would love a really nice custom painted truck shell. But with this being an Outback Fury, I thought a little nod to do would be customize an original shell for use um, just to say look this is what I am not everyone does these up some people say they're cheap and nasty but they can be cool so let me just grab the gopping and hideous original shell and show you the few differences that I've done to make this one a little bit more bearable okay so here's a before makeup and after makeup so the most noticeable things well, what have we reused? Let's start with that. The grill, reused. The arches, reused. Um, other than that, not too bad. We've uh, This didn't actually have all the tap fitted. You get wipers and a snorkel. But look at these giant. Imagine these in scale. These mirrors would be the size of like a smart car. Not only that, they're solid plastic. So when you roll, they smash straight through the uh, body shell. Now this one here has got... RC four-wheel drive uh, floppy mirrors so when you roll which it will be a lot they just squidge down they don't punch through your body shell they do have a uh, reflective bit so your non-existent driver can see through his non-existent windows um, next in line we removed the rear window decal so we got somewhere for our uh, far superior UK RC mod, mud bogging decals to go. Um, of course, at the front. Actually, big up to uh, Mrs. MMP RC for doing this for me. She actually painted the supercharger up, the belt and the... I've only got small fingers, but they are useless at doing arts and crafts. So, this stock bonnet bulge here, I cut to fit around, lined it with a bit of silver so you didn't have the red showing through, and obviously, in a nod to the big V8 lariness that is mud trucking, put a bit of a blower there. Other than that, it's fairly stock. Um, we fitted this nice bumper. I'll explain the uh, technical reasoning for this later on. 
and around the back fitted a nice um, metal bumper there and also changed to some slightly more realistic number plates because these ones are supposed to say Fury but to me they say Furby which is a stupid little squeaky toy that looks like Nicki Minaj's love child and I hate it obviously at the moment we are sporting the 2.8 inch monster truck wheels these are superbly blingy and very dishy helion wheels they're currently discontinued i've grabbed up ugh, spare wheels spare wheels spare wheels i've grabbed up one spare pair in case i round the hex off but ugh, i don't know if not i'll have to go to something else um to change from big tire class to small tire we've got these metal bead locks and they are fitted with rc four-wheel drive mud basher tractor tires these are a really, really authentic scale size V-tread for this sort of size vehicle. Obviously, this is the wrong size, but they're about the same rolling radius. They are just a lot thinner. But what you'll find is these are the ones that you let you bog down and then throw chunks, which is that really cool scale look. This is more like sort of wearing snowshoes. It spreads the load. You're going to get further, throw less of a roost. If you're to enter, say, Outlaw class, that is the only class where you can use a paddle tyre. And at that point, you better hope you've got some mega beefy axles, because these will snap anything. Under the skin is where the real differences start to show. We'll go through the bits that are identical to the crawler version to start with, and then we'll go through the changes. So, things I've done that are the same... Both vehicles have got an uprated steering servo. The reasoning behind the crawler is that you're turning weighted wheels at slow speeds. The reasoning behind this one is you're turning a very fast spinning wheel, but potentially very stuck in mud. So it could have quite a bit of resistance when it's wanting to turn. Uh, the next things that are the same, which you can't see, will be the internals of the axles. I'll try and put a little picture up. The diff blocks inside here have had the plastic versions replace of alloy. That stops the holes rounding out where the crown gear goes. Same goes for this one here. They both then have the CVD axle shafts with the drill bit mod. So you replace the weak pin with a bit of 2mm hardened drill bit. They both have uprated prop shafts. These ones are slightly heavier duty than the crawler one and they are pretty much solid metal so hopefully they're going to hold up. Inside the gearbox on both vehicles we have metal gears. After that is where we start to see things change. On the crawler the battery mounts along the chassis. It, it fits between the chassis rails and it sits between there and the back. This was fine on the crawler, I have moved it forward slightly, but what we found when we test drove this was that it was very wheelie happy, as you can imagine with all the extra power. So without wanting to add weight, I just wanted to move some weight forward. So the battery is relocated through 90 degrees and come forward a little bit to obviously help weight distribution. The main difference comes from the power. In this, we've got a 3S motor, um, well, 3S capable motor. It's a 3660 kV brushless. It's just a cheap ghoul one. Same with the ESC. We're going to test if you are waterproof, little buddy, when you're up to your neck in a swamp. The standard FTX radio gear, because it is very waterproof, which is brilliant. And... The gear set has been uprated to take 32 pitch gears. These are from a Traxxas Revo. I've had a little bit to do there and a massive great pinion gear. This was actually the speed gearing on my Rustler. Although this is nowhere near as fast because these gears reduce it down, it is mega fast for a crawler. It's in the region of 30 miles an hour. Bear in mind these do five or six stock. As you can see here, 
This one's got a hobby wing axe fitted. This is all about low end torque. This barely moves until it hits full throttle. Then it is off. We've added a few extra chassis braces in. These just normally support the battery tray, but we've added one, two, three, and there's a couple at the front just to stop this twisting under torque. And suspension wise, this has got uh, internally sprung dampers. And the reason I did that mostly was they'll be easier to clean, but also with the aid of, where are you? This packet of RC four wheel drive springs, you can adjust the damping rate, which helps me control the wheelies. It needs to be supple enough to get through all the ruts, but obviously if you can control the squat and everything of the vehicle, it's going to wheelie less. Because the main thing with these, if you start to wheelie, if I start to wheelie in that or, or that, you're going to let the throttle off, which allows the nose to come back down. If you're bogging and you start to wheelie, if you let off that throttle, you'll just stop. You need to stay on the throttle. So at the furthest point forward, which is the greatest point of leverage for that, this bumper will allow me, if needs be, to add some flat weights to keep that nose down so I never have to come off the throttle. But really, that's about it. The only thing that takes this away from being a crawler and into the league of mud trucks is spinning that through 90, which is totally reversible, and this. But underneath here, with six nuts and bolts, this whole thing comes off. So if you wanted to have one gearbox and motor assembly for crawling and then just change it for the odd mud truck thing, you can. You do not need to compromise your sort of like crawler forever. You can have it quite modular and swap between the two. So, you know, it's the best of both worlds. You don't have to say, I'm wasting this money on a specific build that's only good at one thing. It's just luckily I built most of this out of spare parts and a little donor car. But yeah, I'm very happy with it. Hopefully now we're going to go out and test it. The weight distribution should have changed the wheelie in a little bit, that and some suspension tweaking. Um, it's a basic build, but it is going to be a riot. And I really hope some of you guys get involved, start building and um, start bogging. I think I'm going to throw these on because I kind of want to get stuck well, not stuck, but slow, you know, churning my way through the bog with a great big roost. But look, please, I implore you, look at the page. I've put a load. I mean, it's locked down. It's so hard to do anything at the moment. But I've put a load of inspirational pictures on there, videos to really give you an idea what the scene's about. Obviously, this is our main page on Facebook, m and PRC. I was flooding it with these a little bit. So if you really want to get the down and dirty with mud bocking, please check out UK RC Mud Bogging on Facebook. But yeah, hopefully that just gives you a little heads up for at least a crawler based build. Two options of wheels and tyres. You can enter two classes in a day just by changing four wheel nuts. And just, yeah, just go and enjoy it. Get muddy, have fun. Cheers.